So I think the Knicks young players are looking pretty good right now. Whether it be Kevin Knox or Mitchell Robinson in Summer League or what we've seen from Frank Nielakina after one season where he had some ups and some downs, but his defense was so good that I'm going to be excited about him. And then I look at the prospect of Mario Hazonia and how he was towards the second half of the season for Orlando. Combine that with Perzingis, who I recognize is not going to play much this season, but you look towards the future and all that. Combined with David Fisdale. I think there are some things to be intrigued by with the Knicks moving forward, and this could be a team that, if everything goes well, or if at least most of the things go well, then they could be approaching uh, the modern-day NBA pretty well in terms of uh, tall players who can defend a few positions and um, do a few things on offense, whether it's make open jumpers, go off the dribble, that sort of stuff. So we're going to start with Kevin Knox. Of course, it's just Summer League, and we should not expect him to carry over into the NBA that seamlessly. Like, I'm not expecting him to put up 20-point performances all the time in his rookie season. But what we can recognize is, number one, he's actually been moving and putting in an effort on defense, which is much better than uh, what scouts had to say for him um, for his one season in college. He's toned down on the mid-range jumpers and the over-dribbling. He's been making three-pointers. And he's been beating guys off the dribble, and he seems a lot more polished offensively than a lot of people thought he was going to be this early on, right? And given his height, which is, what, 6'8", I believe it is, without looking, those are some exciting things. And he seems like a guy who can eventually be like a small forward or sometimes even a small ball four who can... Just do a little bit of everything. I mean, kind of fit in with the Jason Tatum type of wing player. Now, whether he'll be as good as Tatum or not, I don't know. But he has definitely uh, increased his perceived value, I guess. Because it seemed like Knox was going to be a project. And again, I'm not acting like he's going to be just rookie of the year candidate. But it seems like he's going to be pretty damn good. So... That's awesome. And the only reason I say he's not probably going to be a Rookie of the Year candidate is just because you got Aiton, you got Doncic. There's a chance that Trey Young catches fire at some point during the year. Like, it's a tough rookie class to win the award in. But, you know, Knox could just kind of be in that, like, number three to number four or five range uh, behind the big two all season. And that's still pretty damn good. So, I'm a fan of Kevin Knox. Next, if we go to Mario Hazonia, this one's a big if because a decent chunk of his career, he has not looked like a good basketball player. I think part of that is because he's been overwhelmed, whether it be through NBA schemes, NBA athleticism, just overall NBA talent. But I also think he has not been given a real fair chance because there was so much flux in Orlando and during his time I mean between players getting moved and them signing a million centers and changing head coaches and what do they want to do with Alfred Payton what do they not want to do of course we had uh, the Aaron Gordon at small forward season like there's just been so much crap with this magic team the past couple seasons I'm not that surprised that someone like Hazonia just kind of got lost out of the shuffle but even with all that, we saw him at least shoot about league average from three his first season. And then, of course, the second half of this previous year, he was putting on some real scoring performances. He was playing, I believe, the power forward position a lot of the time, if I remember correctly. And he had a decent run of double-digit scoring. He had some 20-point nights. Sometimes he would be making, I don't know, three to five threes a game. Other times he'd be beating guys off the dribble pull-up jumpers, doing stuff in transition, looking like the player that Orlando drafted, right? So, it's obvious that he has talent. It's just a matter of giving him a more relaxed environment where he can play through his mistakes and they're just not being constant change. So if you've got David Fisdale for the next 
I don't know, four years or something. Do like the Celtics did with Doc Rivers, where even as they were bad, they still kept the same guy. Or even what the Raptors did with Dwayne Casey before this season, where, you know, this those guys having the same voice all the time, I'm sure it helped them. And I think that could help his own you here. But also give him some freedom on offense, you know? Like, let him do stuff, because it's clear that he can. And I think those... You know, all that could really help him out, and if that's the case, then with him and Kevin Knox together, you have two tall wings. I mean, Hazonia's, what, 6'7"? 6'8", actually, Hazonia's. So you have him and Kevin Knox, two tall dudes who can go off the dribble, make jump shots, all that. That's some pretty damn good stuff, and that's the type of thing that is working for the best teams in the NBA nowadays. Now, defensively, Hazonia, that one probably a little bit more uncertainty because we've seen him do it on offense at least whereas on his defense you know he's just got to get better at it but given his 6-8 frame you would hope that that uh helps him out just being a not bad defender but you know if you can have those two guys who can also switch defensively at least some then you got something going on there and then speaking of defense we're going to get to Mitchell Robinson next Dude has been making some defensive plays in the Summer League. Now, the fear with him is that he's not totally disciplined on or even off the floor, but he is an athlete and he has to get in better shape, but the physical profile is there, and if he can come along on defense, and he might be a bit more of a project than someone like a Kevin Knox is at this point, but if you can get him to being that athletic five who can play within a team system and be disciplined then that's only going to make you better and hell he might even be athletic enough to where he can switch a bit on the perimeter although I wouldn't ask him to be really good at that like right now but I do think you could set like Clint Capella as a goal defensively for Mitchell Robinson to where he can be that athlete and play some perimeter defense and all that, but it's also taken Capella like three or four years really to get to that level. So you got to give him some time. You got to give all these guys time. I mean, these dudes are young. Um, but now if we can get to uh, Neil Aquina, who may still be my favorite player out of all these guys, even though I think Knox is probably the best at this point. Maybe not right now, but like fast forward a couple years. Uh, I mean, Neil Aquina right now is on pace to being like maybe the third or fourth best perimeter defender in the NBA. He's really good, man. He fights over screens. He already just has such a passion for defense, I guess, combined with his like 6'5 frame and the fact that he's still skinny as hell. So you assume if he just gains some weight and then keeps up on that side of the floor, dude can really be something. Uh, And the only reason I say third or fourth is because you look at like Kawhi and then between like Andre Robertson or whoever the hell else they might be a little better than him but dude's legit and if you just look at the defensive potential there of a five man unit that is Neil Aquina, Perzingis, Hazonia, Kevin Knox, Mitchell Robinson all of those guys are six five and up and again you have to hope that Hazonia can figure it out and Robinson can figure it out like This is a maybe, but if it works out, then you have a very switchy team that can do a lot on offense between Hazonia and Knox making plays, and then Neil Aquina hopefully is still improving on his offense, and then of course Perzingis is good. That looks pretty okay if you ask me. I don't love Tim Hardaway Jr. He's got talent, he's got to work on his efficiency and his defense, Um, but you know, there's a chance that he could figure it out and get better as well. And again, the fact that it seems like Fisdale is all in on this team for a few seasons, that's good stuff. So, I like where the Knicks are going. I think Kevin Knox could end up being their best draft pick in a long time. Well, not that long. I mean, Perzingis is better. But, you know, outside of Perzingis and Neil Aquina, you look at a long stretch of picks for the Knicks. And you got to go all the way back to, like, Trevor Ariza, who even then didn't totally do it for them he did it later on so um you know they kind of nailed it and I love the Hazonia signing because hey you know what might as well take a chance on him so again I'm a fan of what the Knicks have going on 
I don't expect them to be that good this season because one, Przingis isn't there and they're probably going to have trouble scoring. And again, all these dudes are super young, so they're going to make mistakes, but it should be fun to watch. should be exciting. There'll probably be some fun games here and there. And hey, you know what? Kevin Knox. I wouldn't be shocked if we end up seeing kind of like a Donovan Mitchell situation, not being as good as Donovan Mitchell, but in the sense of like, the season begins, the Knicks have an offense, and Kevin Knox has ball handling possessions here and there, and then you fast forward to like game 40, and he's the number one option for the team. So, I like Knox, I like the potential of the other guys, and now it's just a waiting game. Of course, if they sign Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant for agency, then that gets you going a lot faster, but yeah, I'm done.